Today we will be going over something very simple but very useful for us marketers. It is an AI automation that creates images for your social media posts. Now, I hope that you love hearing that because I have dealt with many circumstances in my marketing career where the images were too similar to um, you know, other stock images. We've all seen that. Like some of them are just super corny uh, and my clients didn't like them. And we would, my team would have to search and search and search through images. And sometimes it got to the point where we would just take images of ourselves <laughs> and send them to them. So it was so custom. Um, but doing this here solves that problem and it also automates it so you don't have to do that search anymore. They get a custom image and the image can also have text on it as well. And there's some really great AI platforms out there that create these high quality images. The one that we're using in this automation is Flux. I want to give a shout out to Mid Journey though. It is one of the fav one of our favorite uh, image creators out there, but currently they do not have an API. Um, so we're hoping that that eventually comes. But real quick, my name is Kelly. I love to do AI automation tutorials and I also have a school called the AI Marketing Automation Lab and I'd love for you to check it out. Our school contains these templates that I'm going over right now that you could download with one click. We have office hours, we have experts in there and I just love to see you come check it out. All right, now let's hop into this build. We're going to automate that whole process that I just talked about before. And like I said, it's also really great at producing text on images like this. Um, I mean, that, it's really high quality. It's customized. Um, and these are commercially licensed images, so they cost a whopping four cents an image. Uh, so for four cents, you can get a custom image that's as gorgeous as this. Uh, your branding can be on it. You could have whatever style you want. Um, and it's automated. All right, now let me take you through how this works. Again, I'm gonna go back to my Airtable. You know I love my Airtable. Um, we always like to start in here. I like it because it's flexible instead of embedding stuff directly into Make in the code there. So always Airtable, I love it. I had it look at one post. Uh, it's a humorous post that I created for the future of AI Pasta. Uh, it read it and it came up with this image for it, uh, which is a pretty funny and cool image. Uh, I've got to say that I like to have a little bit of a sense of humor when I'm building things. Otherwise, it can kind of like, you know, get a little like droned out because I'm constantly trying to figure out how to problem solve. So you might see AI pasta come up again in my examples because it just makes me laugh. <laughs> But let me show you how this works. So I'm going to take that AI pasta one again. And I'm just going to put that here so I could show you in a blank row. Then you're going to choose the aspect ratio that you want. So we'll do 16 to 9. We'll see what that comes up with. Now we're just going to run this simple automation here. So I'm hitting one, run once. Uh, so it's grabbing the post. It's sending it over to Claude to create the prompt. Claude wrote the prompt. It's sending it off to Black Forest Labs which I'll explain more later. Black Forest Labs is gonna send it to create an image. Uh, we're gonna put a 45 second wait time here for the image to generate. It can probably generate in less time, but I like to give it 45 seconds. So we'll wait, 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 wait. All right, like that, 45 seconds is up. Now the next module is gonna go, and now it's gonna send it back to our Airtable. So if we go back to our Airtable, we could see the image it created. We love AI pasta, look at that, ah, oh, amazing. Uh, and if you don't like the image, you could just rerun it, and it'll come up with something different. So how does this work? How do we do this? Let me show you. First, you're going to need to sign up for Black Forest Labs to get access to Flux 1.1. And to do that, you have to go uh, through Replicate. So it's a bunch of layers, but it's pretty simple. You go to replicate.com and you get to go to the pricing page here and scroll down to Image Models and click on Black Forest Labs. Flux 1.1 Pro. And again, it's only four cents an image. That's how they're going to charge you. Uh, so click on that and you'll see down here that uh, it's gonna say you wanna get started. It says sign in with a GitHub account. So if you don't have a GitHub account, uh, it's going to force you to create one, which is no big deal, pretty simple process. Just go through that, put your credit card in. And then once you have that done, up here you're gonna go to API. And then there'll be an API right here for you. You're just gonna wanna copy that, 
hang on to that copy because you'll need it to make the connection and make the automations. Uh, so it really just took me all of like, you know, maybe 90 seconds to go through this whole process. And then you have access to Black Forest Labs after that. So again, some layers, it'll take 90 seconds. We're, we're all used to signing up for things. It's fine, four cents an image. You can't compete with that. I'm gonna show you how to build this out from scratch to have its own table. You can also do this in a Google Sheet. Um, but again, we have Airtable here. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is create a new table. And we're gonna call it Images for Posts. The first field is a long text field, and we're going to call this one post. Whatever it is, could be a LinkedIn post, a LinkedIn comment, Twitter. Um, it may be a blog post. It doesn't matter. The next thing we're going to build here is the aspect ratio, and this is going to be a single select. These are the ratios that are available to use in Flux 1.1 Pro. Go ahead and take a screenshot of the ratios here. I put the most common at the top, uh, 1 to 1, 16 to 9. These are the most commonly used, but then here's what you can also have underneath. And we'll save that. And the next field is, we call it image, and this is an attachment field. So you just select the attachment field here and call it image and then click save. This field is called image URL. And it is actually a URL field. And then we always need our last modified field. So this is just last modified time. Select modified time, call it last modified and save. We use last modified time because make is gonna look at that to figure out when it needs to run next. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to build this automation out. Now, if you join my school, remember you can get this automation in just one click and you won't have to build it at all on your own. So the first module we're going to put in here is an Airtable. It's going to be Watch Records. And you're going to want to select... Do, 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 do. You'll have to add the connection. If you don't have the connection to your table, then it'll take you through the OA Auth validation, which is no big deal. But we're connecting to our video outreach table here. And then the base is social media automations. Uh, again, your tables might be named something different. These are just what my tables are named and what I work off of. The table we're connecting to is image for posts. Image for posts, and that's, that's the one that we just built uh, with the trigger field last modified. So if you create a new row in Airtable or say you created 10 new rows and added your posts in there, the last modified field will see that and it will trigger the automation. I put a limit to 10, but you can set it however you like. Okay, so here, just put a really easy filter in right here called images empty. So we're looking at the image URL field in our air table, this table right here again. So like this field here, we're seeing if it's empty and then it will run. So for example, we don't want it to overwrite the images that are there already, so we're just checking to make sure that the row in our air table is empty first. Now if there is a URL here and we don't like this image, just delete that URL and then it'll run again. And it'll give you another image. So that's what we're talking about here. And that's why we have that filter here, so basically to block it from going any farther if there's a URL there, okay? And here's where some of the magic happens. So we have Claude, my man. Uh, here you'll enter Claude. And you could use ChatGPT for this, um, but I like to use Claude 3.5 Sonnet here. Like I said, he's my guy. Uh, I put in a maximum of 4,000 tokens. Add role as a user type text. Now here, this can all be custom. You want, to you want it customized to your business. So an example in here, like if you want it to be more playful, and you want it to be more of an illustrative style, then you would put that in here. So your output must be in JSON format and look like this. Okay, so you want to copy that and make sure that that is in there again. So if you're in the school, which is a free trial right now, seven days, go ahead and join uh, and just get all these templates right away. Why not? Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? And here we've inserted the aspect ratio. We don't want to have a baked in aspect ratio because we want to be able to choose which one um, and that's pulling it from the air table. All right. 
And then at the bottom, we have the post. We give it the post to read right here. So it's reading the post that we created and it's deciding what a good image would be for that. And then making uh, and creating that output for us. So the next one is an HTTP module and make a request. And you have to fill it out exactly as we have it here. So according to the Black Forest Labs API, this is what you need to have in the URL up here. The method is going to be post. The headers you have authorization under name, and this is blacked out because this is our API. But this is where the API key, remember I showed you getting your key from the Black Forest Labs, uh, this is where you're gonna put it. So this API key here, you're gonna copy that and that is going to go after the word bearer. Don't want to take away that word. Uh, bearer has to be there, okay? Then we have uh, the body, which is going to be raw. Uh, the content type is JSON. Content is going to be the text response from the previous module, which was Claude, who created our prompt for us. And you could put that in the text response. And remember, we told Claude that it has to output in JSON format. All right, so the next module adding is a, we're gonna go into tools and we're going to add a sleep module. And we're just gonna say delay for 45 seconds. Next, we add another HTTP module. This is a make a request module. And in the URL field up here, we're going to insert data URLs get. The method is get. Under the header's name is authorization. And under value, we have the word token. And then again, you have your API key here. Our API key is blacked out right here. You're going to want to copy and paste yours into here, uh, but keep the word token in front of it. Under item two, name, enter, content type. And under value, enter application slash JSON. And then here under the body type, we're going to put raw. And under content type, again, application slash JSON. And then click OK. And this is the module that is going to retrieve our beautiful image that Black Forest produced. So let's open this up again. Let's start over here. So again, it's a make automation Airtable. Update a record base is social media automations. Images for posts is the table. Record ID. Record ID is coming from the first Airtable that we created. Now you're going to put data output in file URL and also in image URL. And that's it. Once you have everything set, set up, uh, you can come back into your Airtable. Again, now let's play with it. Let's say we don't like this image right here. We're going to delete that image URL and we're going to go over here and rerun it. And actually, let's make this one 16.9, actually 9.16. And let's run this one and see what happens. Again, this is the AI pasta post. So you've seen a lot of the diversity in those images so far. Let's see what we got. All right, we got a 16.9 image. Uh, love the AI pasta. It's looking great. This one's a col colorful version. Uh, here's the vertical image coming out from the sky. Love it so much. I mean, if AI pasta is in the future, I hope it looks like that. <laughs> it's so funny to me. Uh, so that's it. That's our simple social media AI automation for generating images based off your posts. Uh, it's, I hope you follow the builds. That's how I've learned by building these uh, AI automations by myself. I was never a coder previously, just a marketer for 15 years. And I've just been exploring how to make things easier for us marketers, how to make things easier for sales, because I've worked with sales a bunch. Uh, so that's what I'm about. That's what my school is about. Again, the AI Marketing Automation Lab. I invite you to join. Check it out. Seven-day free trial. We have a bunch of new content coming out. 
I hope to see you there and I hope you really enjoyed this video and enjoy generating images that are unique for only four cents. See you next time for another one.